If you're a young man interested in dating women, this video is for you. I think part of the reason why we struggle these days with dating and mating is because we don't approach it with any kind of strategy or any kind of foresight. There is no vision, there is no aggression, there is no fucking mindset. And the best analogy that I can think of is the job analogy. I like to think of dating as being a business owner looking to hire an executive because your woman is going to be an executive of your company. So you must approach it with the same due diligence. What's the job description, a.k.a. what kind of company is she going to be walking into? What kind of man are you? What are you building? What is she going to be help mating you with? What skills are going to be necessary for her to have to contribute to your company? What experiences prior to working for your company are going to be necessary in the facilitation of her job. So just like a hiring manager at Google or Meta, the most important thing on the resume is previous employers. What kind of men has she dated in the past? What is she used to? Is she used to toxicity? Is she used to nurturing broke men with no direction? Is she used to rehabilitating men with low self-esteem or mental health disorders? Because unfortunately, you do not want to be the first good this woman has ever met in her life. No. She is going, bro, she going to destroy you, bro. All that chaos that she been dealing with, bro, come, no, bro. And I can say from experience, that is true. So, fellas, pay attention to not just the caliber of men that she's dated in the past, but also how she talks about them. It should make your ears perk if all her boyfriends were narcissistic. All her boyfriends weren't shit. Or all her situationships were with men of low character and low integrity. Chances are, that's what she's grown accustomed to. And that's what she's going to expect from you. So even if you are better, you constantly have to reassure her that you're not them. That shouldn't be your job. Or, worst case scenario, her energy might actually reduce you to the level of those men. Because it might not even be that those men were that bad. Maybe some aspect of her zapped them of their mojo. Look at her, guess what she is? She a witch? A witch. And she dragged them down because just like we say a woman can build a man up, a woman can subconsciously also tear a man down, even if her intentions are pure. So pay attention to her resume. Are you in good company or are you going to have to be the janitor of her life? The way that I like to think about dating these days is I think of two things. Is this somebody that I wouldn't mind being quarantined with? And is this somebody that I wouldn't mind being lost in New York City with? Now, with the quarantine thing, it's basically, can I be bored with this person? When there's no frills, no trips, no romantic stuff going on, no pomp, no circumstance, can we still have a good time? Is our conversation alone entertaining? How are we during mundane Mondays when there's nothing to do and it's raining outside? Because unfortunately, these days, a lot of relationships are only built on highlights. They're built on, he took me here, we went to this really cool place, we did this really cool thing. But when there's none of that to do, which is the majority of life, things fall apart. And that's why I think so many divorces happen during quarantine, because people realize that I really don't like this person. I actually can't stand this person, but we've been able to distract ourselves for so long by doing a bunch of cool shit and convincing other people that we were the it couple. So I like to think of who would I rather be bored with? And it gives you a good glimpse into if this is a woman who's capable of even being bored, which is so important for the long-term sustainability of a relationship. Most of life is boring. Most of life is predictable. Is this a woman who can handle it or is this a woman who constantly needs attention and excitement, pomp, circumstance and validation? Now, the other thing is, who would I rather be lost in New York City with? This shows me two things. Is this woman competent and is this woman resourceful? And I thought about this the last time that I was in New York because I was kind of lost. I wasn't really super familiar with the subway system because I hadn't been back in New York in over a decade. And I had to kind of use street smarts, context clues to figure my way around the city. But I thought to myself, what kind of woman would I rather experience this with? Who would be a good teammate in a scenario similar to this? So if you wouldn't want to be quarantined with her, regardless of how fine she is in the whole nine, 
because she's either going to get bored too easily or other than her looks and other than the cool stuff you guys do outside, there's really nothing else to your relationship. Or if you wouldn't want to be lost in another city with her or another country with her and you knew that you guys together, putting your heads together would find a way, keep it pushing. I often talk about how spaces like the Manosphere do young men an injustice by idealizing old school women, idealizing modesty, idealizing grandma, and making the case that grandma's generation was better than this generation. And I think in some ways that's true. But in other ways, I think what's really happening is that this generation is a lot more honest and bombastic and shameless than grandma's generation. But grandma used to get down as well. There are a bunch of stories of men back in those days raising children that they weren't theirs. There are a bunch of stories of men experiencing domestic violence. There are a bunch of stories of men being severely unhappy. But typically those stories don't see the light of day. Using Felicia Rashad as an example, a lot of men bring her up as the ideal woman and wife because of her character on The Cosby Show. What they don't realize is that she's been married three times. Now we can assume that she married three shitty men or the more likely assumption is that she might be shitty herself. Either shitty in the choice of men that she made or some shitty aspect of her personality type that drove these men away. What's often not discussed is the fact that the number one killer of black men is high blood pressure, is cholesterol. And women of every female delegation control the community's diet. Unfortunately, a lot of our women are also socialized to seek out the thrilling aspects of relationship. And for some women, that's the arguments, that's the nagging, that's the passionate, fired up parts. Not realizing that not only is the food that you've implemented as part of his diet worsening his condition, but also all these spikes in blood pressure are also worsening his condition. So during this series, I'm going to talk about some yellow flags, including family, skin, piercings, hair, cosmetic surgery, scent, nails, makeup, clothing, education, profession, spirituality, diet, social media, and money. And to make the distinction, a red flag is stop, do not pass go, do not collect $200 turn around and leave this man or this woman alone. But a, a yellow flag is you can proceed, but proceed with caution because it might actually be a red flag that you're just not close enough to see yet. Or it might be something that you have to plan and budget for in the future that you're building with this person. And the aim of this is to help us men distinguish between women who are actually worth our time and energy and effort and women that we might consider staying away from. Fellas, we need to start looking at women like stocks or investments. Before you buy a stock or investment, you have to consider its projections, a market analysis, a performance review. Not just what does this stock cost today, but what is it going to cost tomorrow? Is this an appreciating asset or a depreciating asset? And the truth is, and women don't like when I say this, from a beauty perspective, women are a depreciating asset. She's never going to be as young as she is today. Her skin is never going to be as tight as it is today. Her vagina is never going to be as unfamiliar as it is today. So you must focus as a man on the intangibles. Is this a woman who can help multiply your vision? Is this a woman, whether in skill set, in disposition, or in resourcefulness, can expedite your purpose and your mission in life as a man. But on a ground level, is this a potential asset or a potential bill? Most people in general, most women in particular, are potential liabilities. And if we're unwilling to be analytical in our assessment of them, we'll have to deal with the consequences. Please comment below what you would like me to cover during this series. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you press that notification bell. And stay tuned.